Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a bootable Windows PE environment and have it come with only backup features. So for this, we're going to be using a tool called Omni PE Builder. Just a quick word before we start here. The finished Windows PE environment will contain most of the features of Omni Backer. But since it's not in an actual full fat operating system, you can't expect it to perform system backups and system clones and stuff. So first, before opening Omni PE Builder, you want to open the zip file that I will provide down in the description below and go to the program files 86 directory and locate the install location of Omni P Builder. Here we want to extract the Windows PE environment. So we're just going to extract the Windows PE environment to the source directory of the Alme Backer PE Builder, and then we're gonna launch this PE Builder. Okay, so a bit about Alme PE Builder. Alme PE Builder is based on the Windows 10 PE environment. It's just a bare bones Windows PE based on Windows 10 with some additional Alme Backer features and Alme partition and system features along with the capability of you as the end user being able to add files into the bootable windows pe environment in the next menu there's really nothing to note here because we've already downloaded the windows pe environment files so i'll briefly explain what windows pe is windows pe is basically a stripped down version of windows 10 that you can load onto a USB, SD card, or a lightweight storage media that you can take with you anywhere. It's kind of like Windows to go, except it doesn't require that much bandwidth to run the system. At maximum, if you take all the options here, let me expand everything. If you take all the options right here, it's only going to consume 2 point something gigabytes. So it's really small compared to a standard Windows 10 installation or Windows 11 installation. Now because we've extracted our Windows PE environment files to the directory that we extracted to, we're just gonna add our own file and call it a day. We're not gonna download anything from the internet here because that can take a long time and we don't want that to happen. So what I'm doing now is basically adding this folder into our final Windows PE environment. So I added the folder itself and the driver installation files contained in the folder. Now we're going to click next. On the last menu here, it's going to give us three options for our final created ISO. You can either burn to a CD, DVD, or burn it to a USB drive or whatever kind of external media you have or you can just export the ISO file in case you want to burn it to somewhere later. Generally speaking, the first two options will be recommended over the third, but since I'm using a virtual machine for the sake of screen capping, I'll be using the third option which is to export to an ISO file because my virtual environment VMware directly supports booting from an ISO. Okay, now it's done. You can exit out of software and here you can see the ISO that's created for you. This ISO can now be burned to any installation media that you want. But since I am on a virtual environment, I'm on VMware, I'm not gonna burn my uh, ISO file to anywhere for now. For those of you running on bare metal that is running with your actual machines, you can just head on over to the motherboard BIOS and start the Windows PE environment from there. 
but if you are running virtualization layers, here's the gist of what we are doing. I'm using VMware, so my method may vary slightly to yours if you are running, for example, Parallels desktop or something. First, when opening up the virtualization software, you need to grant it administrative privileges to let it access your physical disks. When it launches, you need to go to a sacrificial virtual machine or create a new virtual machine for restoring the data, restoring your previous operating system. For the sake of it, I'm using this virtual machine without TPM to show you guys the process. So the first thing we need to do is to go into the add menu and add a CD DVD drive or convert your current CD DVD drive to boot from the ISO that Alma AP Builder spit out for us. Next, we want to add a generic SESI device. That's going to be the device that contains our system backup, that contains the system that we want to restore to the system. Now, if you're not sure which physical disks you are inserting into the system, just open command prompt in administrative mode and then type disk part. Once disk part launches, type list disk. And according to the listed sizes, you should be able to identify the disks that you need to connect to the system to get it working. When you are done with that, you can close command prompt and go back to check if you've connected the right physical disks to the virtual machine. And because earlier I said this is sacrificial virtual machine just for show, not a virtual machine that I can have my data deleted, I'm not going to delete the old hard drive that I have in here. Instead, I'm going to add a new virtual hard disk, this one using the SATA interface, just in case my NVMe protocol doesn't work, to simulate a new system that you are trying to restore your old operating system to. And now we are good to go. Just click OK to close the menu, and then play your virtual machine, and mash F2 until the BIOS menu shows up. Now that we are in this menu, we can see two CD-ROM drives. One of them contains the ISO that we want to boot from. So we're going to try them all. Okay, the first one doesn't work. So now let's head on to the second one. And that works. Now we are in the drive that we created, or the ISO that we created using Alma PE Builder. And after our Windows PE environment is up, let's open up on my backburn. And as we can see here, I've got on my backburn technician plus. That's because at the time of building this PE environment, on my PE builder has detected that I have the license for technician plus. And that's gonna appear in my Windows PE environment. But let's take a look around this Alme Backper portable version, semi-portable version. So we've got all the backup options and the sync options readily available. And most importantly, we have this restore function. So we can point to the system backup that we have on our other drive that we inserted as a generic SCSI device. And then it's gonna ask us for our destination we're just gonna click the 256 gig hard drive, say the hard drive that I inserted earlier. So this is the disk to our new system and we wanna restore the old operating system onto it. And here we see SSD alignment and universal restore. SSD alignment is basically for it. If the destination is an SSD, select that. And universal restore if you did your system backup on different hardware as you are restoring the hardware you are restoring to now, just click it. And this pop-up message is asking us if we want to have the same file format on the new disk as we had for the old one.
Okay. It took some time to complete, but it completed. So now we can try our restore the system. Okay, exit out of our backward, and then reboot the system. Now, when we reboot, we're gonna again mash F2 to bring up the BIOS menu. So this time, instead of booting from the CD-ROM drive, we are gonna boot from the hard drive that we restored to. So that's the SATA one right down here, not the NVMe one. Because it is a restore system, Windows will tend to get confused. But if you are sure that your disk is healthy, you can skip this checking. And here's a good sign, the Alme recovery environment screen. When we last backed up the system, it had the Alme recovery environment screen turned on. Here's another good sign. It's asking me for my pin. It says my pin is incorrect. Because you may remember the last time we backed up, there's a TPM in our system. Be it virtual or real, it's a TPM. In this virtual environment, the system detects no TPM presence. Naturally, pin doesn't work. It'll ask me to reset through my Microsoft account. After a brief reset of the pin, it will welcome me to my desktop. And here on the desktop, we immediately get a notice of expiration from Alme because, well, right before the backup, the software was just gonna expire. So, yeah. And another ad from Alme. So sure enough, that's our system, right before the backup. And here we have it, a fully restored Windows 11 system. And now we can continue from where we left off before the backup. With that, our task today is completed. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please don't hesitate to give a like and consider subscribing for more content like this in the future. Goodbye for now. I'll see you in the next one.